Hey everyone, so I recently uh, got a subscription to The Motley Fool um, and they had a few picks I wanted to run through because um, first they caught my eye a little bit and also some of these companies are areas that I had experience in um, as sort of a software developer's perspective so I thought it might be helpful to share some of my experiences in the space and how it might relate to these companies in case if you are invested in this company as well. Um, so the first one I wanted to go through is Appian. So what I see, um, this is one of their recommendations, actually, this company, which is um, this low code automation platform. Um, so I'm going to go through. Uh, so first off, I've actually used a lot of no code or low code tools before um, as a software developer because it actually helps speeds up development a, a lot. Um, so I'll run through a few that are out there, sort of their competitors and how I think Appian com uh, compares to these competitors. So you can have a better sense of whether this is a company that's worthwhile um, in the long term. Um, so I think the low code and no code space the, is going to grow really quickly over the, in the coming years. So that's a first a good thing. Um, so I think their total addressable market is really large. Um, the only thing is that in this space, it is a bit competitive. Um, there's actually a lot of low code and no code tools. And I'm not too sure if Appian's like enterprise approach will allow them to compete as well or as effectively against some of these other tools that are more um, like consumer oriented or more towards like smaller businesses, but iterating really quickly. Um, so for example, um, from what I see for Appian, um, it, it, they say it's a platform for building business application tools. And so I'm trying to look through the types of tools they, they allow. So I see they have some like apps that they probably um, allow people to build, some like business. This one looks like internal tooling. So maybe something like a employee might use to help uh, some of uh, I am like a software that an employee might use to kind of run some internal tasks, like for example, look up a client or stuff like that, um, help a client out, customer support might use it or engineers on the team might use it to uh, get more details on a client, like a whole interface. So I wanted to go through some of the competitors in the space that I've used in the past at companies I've worked at or for uh, me personally. So for example, in the mobile app space, there's actually a really cool startup right now. They, um, they're they not a public company, but um, they, their approach of it is actually really great. Uh, so they allow you to, this is the startup called Adalo, and they allow you to actually make mobile applications. You can actually see that you make these mobile apps on Adalo and you can publish it on the Google Play um, and iOS store. So it's actual physical app. And I think this one actually has a lot of potential. If they can continue building this out, I can see them being a, a really amazing company in the coming years. Um, the main thing is like really the technology is there. The main thing is really, are they able to get enough demand? Like, is there a demand for these mobile apps um, for Adalo? And unfortunately it's a private company. so. It's not really investable for most people. Um, and even probably accredited investors would have a hard time getting into the cap table as well. Um, so yeah, but honestly, I think if if they are able to uh, acquire that demand and there is enough demand from customers on building these mobile apps, I think Adalo is honestly a better solution. And they're really building really quickly. Um, and yeah, so... Adalo is there. There's uh, for internal tooling. Um, there's actually a really cool startup that came out and growing extremely fast. Um, I think they're at a Series A or Series B now, if I remember correctly, or even further along. And it's this tool called Retool, and software developers actually love using this tool to build internal tooling because it is really versatile. Um, so you don't have to work with like building your own UI and stuff like that. You can just hook up directly to your database and set up some of the uh, permissions and then start editing a database or viewing records from a database. They support a bunch of databases. 
And yeah, and I honestly think Retool is a much better. You can see like how many players use them. I've used Retool before at past companies and it's an amazing tool. I actually never used Appian before. And honestly, like looking at some of the tools, it looks really, really old tech. Um, like just the UI and things like that. It, it doesn't look great. Um, I'm actually really curious like what types of companies uses Appian. Um, if you work at a company that uses Appian, please let me know. I'd love to talk to you more about this. Um, shoot me a DM or uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to like uh, follow up and just talk with you and see how you guys use it and uh, what, uh, what types of companies use this actually. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of my initial thoughts on Appian. Um, I, I really think there's a lot of better competitors out there, like small strappy startups that are probably going to get really large. Retool specifically, I think it's going to get extremely large. I, I think Retool, honestly, if they can continually build this up, they're going to be a public company. Um, and um, yeah, they're like at a Series A or Series B now. Honestly, they just need to ramp up the revenues and really like get that demand going, maybe get up a sales team to start doing enterprise sales. And I think Retool is really uh, going to be a really interesting potential. And if there's any private investors here who are credit investors or seed angel investors, I, I honestly think you should really take a look at uh, Retool, especially since Appian's like a $10 billion market cap company already. Um, it, like getting in at a series A or series B could be like a 10, 20 X uh, easily. So yeah, I think um, some of these players I think are really great. And there's also a lot of other like low code, no to code tools. Like um, there's like Webflow, which is if anybody's used Wix before, I, it's like a really great version of Wix. I, in my personal opinion, I use Webflow a lot and it's really great for designers and software developers because it is very, uh, Webflow is very, very versatile. You can go in and edit the actual CSS and some of the HTML. And I know Wix and some of these other platforms allow you to do that as well, but uh, Webflow is actually just much better in my opinion. I, I think Webflow could become a public company, company in the coming years, especially like Wix is already a public company. Webflow is better in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I think like the space honestly has like a lot of competition, um, but really I don't think any one of these players are gonna like take out all the other players because it's really hard to build a no code, low code tool. Like Webflow, I think um, it took the founder two or three years to build a version that even works. And in that time, they barely, they didn't have any customers, right? So these these are really really heavy software projects, I would say. Um, and Adalo, uh, Retool, Webflow. So I think um, they're probably going to be players that focus specifically on their niche, and then maybe grow out over time. Um, sort of like maybe maybe similar actually to a Shopify or something like that, or get acquired by some of these players, like maybe Salesforce or enterprise players. Um, once they get to a level where, uh, yeah, where they feel like they can't continue growing like Slack. Um, I was a investor in Slack for a while, um, where they need that enterprise help now and they might get, just end up getting acquired by one of these companies. Um, and yeah, so that's sort of some of my thoughts around this space. I'd love to hear more comments from you guys on, um, what you think of this. Um, and yeah, I think for me, Appian, I... Honestly, just from a product perspective, I just see there's a lot better solutions. So that's one reason I don't, uh, like personally, I don't think Appian's such a great investment for me. Um, but maybe later on, I'll take a look at some of these things. I'm uh, Appian, review Appian again and see if this is, this is something that has a lot more potential.